The significance of Trudeau's visit as the first Canadian Prime Minister to visit South Korea in 10 years and the bilateral relations between the two countries Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's visit to South Korea this week marks a historic milestone in the bilateral relations between the two countries. It is the first official visit by a Canadian Prime Minister to South Korea in 10 years, since Stephen Harper's visit in 2013. The visit also coincides with the 70th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Canada and South Korea, which were established in 1953 after the Korean War. Trudeau's visit reflects the importance of South Korea as a strategic partner for Canada in the Indo-Pacific region, where both countries share common interests and values. South Korea is Canada's seventh-largest trading partner, with bilateral trade reaching $13.6 billion in 2022. The two countries also have a free trade agreement that came into force in 2015, which has boosted trade and investment opportunities for both sides. Beyond trade and economics, Canada and South Korea also have strong cooperation on global and regional issues, such as climate change, nuclear nonproliferation, human rights, and peace and security. Both countries are members of the G7, which is holding its summit in Japan later this week. Trudeau and South Korean President Yoon suk yeol are expected to discuss ways to enhance their collaboration on these issues, as well as to address the challenges posed by China's growing influence and North Korea's nuclear ambitions. One of the highlights of Trudeau's visit is his attendance at a ceremony to open the Kapyong Battle Commemorative Trail which honors Canada's contributions during the Korean War. The trail is located at the site of the Battle of Kapyong, where Canadian soldiers fought bravely against overwhelming Chinese forces in April 1951. More than 26,000 Canadians served in the Korean War, and 516 of them died. The trail is a tribute to their sacrifice and legacy. Trudeau's visit to South Korea demonstrates Canada's commitment to strengthening its ties with a key ally and partner in Asia. It also signals Canada's recognition of South Korea's role as a leader and a model for democracy, innovation, and green growth in the region. By enhancing their bilateral relations, Canada and South Korea can work together to advance their shared vision of a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable Indo-Pacific. One of the highlights of Trudeau's historic visit to South Korea was his meeting with President Moon Jae-in on May 17. The two leaders discussed ways to enhance bilateral cooperation on trade, security, climate change and human rights. They also reaffirmed their commitment to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and the peaceful resolution of the North Korean nuclear issue. Another highlight was Trudeau's participation in the P4G Summit on Climate Change and Green Growth in Seoul on May 18. The summit brought together leaders from 12 countries and various international organizations to share best practices and mobilize investments for green projects. Trudeau announced that Canada would join the P4G initiative as a partner country and pledged $100 million to support developing countries in their transition to low-carbon economies. Trudeau also visited the Demilitarized Zone DMZ, and the Canadian War Memorial in Busan during his trip. The DMZ is a 4-kilometer wide strip of land that divides North and South Korea. It is one of the most heavily fortified borders in the world and a symbol of the ongoing tensions between the two countries. Trudeau toured the Joint Security Area, where soldiers from both sides stand face to face, and observed a moment of silence for the victims of the Korean War. The Canadian War Memorial in Busan is a tribute to the more than 26,000 Canadians who served in the Korean War, of whom 516 died. Trudeau laid a wreath at the memorial and met with some of the surviving veterans who fought for peace and freedom on the peninsula. One of the highlights of Trudeau's historic visit to South Korea was the signing of a joint statement on strengthening cooperation on various issues, such as trade, security, climate change, and human rights. The joint statement, issued on May 17, 2023, reaffirmed the strong and comprehensive partnership between Canada and South Korea, based on shared values and interests. The joint statement also expressed the two countries' support for peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, 
and their commitment to the complete denuclearization of North Korea. Trudeau and Yoon agreed to work closely together to implement UN Security Council resolutions and sanctions on North Korea, and to promote dialogue and diplomacy to achieve a peaceful resolution of the nuclear issue. In addition, the joint statement highlighted the importance of enhancing cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges between Canada and South Korea, especially among youth and students. Trudeau and Yoon welcomed the launch of a new bilateral youth mobility agreement, which will allow young Canadians and Koreans to travel and work in each other's countries for up to two years. They also agreed to expand educational cooperation and academic exchanges, and to support the development of cultural industries and creative sectors. The joint statement demonstrated the depth and breadth of the bilateral relationship between Canada and South Korea, and their shared vision for a more prosperous, secure, and sustainable future in the Indo-Pacific region and beyond.